Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Saturday, happy morning, happy afternoon, and happy evening to everybody around the world. We are here with Kevin and Helene Lane. We're also here with Joe Cornbrot. Hi. There he is. Uh, my name is Ryan T. Husk. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, this is part of the production team for uh, 455 Films. That's a... Uh, you guys have made so many documentaries, all of which I've heard of. Uh, that's uh, The Captains, The Captains Close-Ups, Chaos on the Bridge, For the Love of Spock, um, What We Left Behind, and I feel like there's one other one. Get, get a, a Life. Get a Life, of course. How could I forget Get a Life? And, uh, and now the upcoming Voyager documentary as of right now not yet named but we're really really excited about it and people are filing in right now we see you uh marina muhammad galenda war dog Han oh, out in jonathan wright medallion katie carr so Hello, everybody first I things first while everybody's filing in uh slowly because i know facebook does take a minute to have everybody come in uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves, starting with Kevin and Helene? Oh, goodness. Well, um, we're from Miami, which is where we are right now. It's a little rainy today, but it's been pretty glorious the last few weeks. Um, we met in writing class in college. Wow. <laughs> and we started uh, doing some videos together. And then uh, we met up with uh, Mr. Zappone in 2000. Nine. 2009 for William Shatner and Gonzo Ballet. And that's well, how this whole thing kind of started. What was Gonzo Ballet, by the way? That's the one I don't know about. Uh, well, it's actually a ballet set to Bill's uh, record that he got a call one day from a choreographer, Marco Sappington, who asked if he would be available to have a ballet set to it. He asked if there was any money involved. She said no. <laughs> okay, anyway, and uh, it was a record that he did with uh, Ben Folds, and most most people Ooh. know Ben Folds. Uh, actually, he's a University of Miami graduate, which I had no idea. Uh, but yeah, she, that, the, guy. the Has Been album, the Has Been album, and it was a great, great, very truthful, introspection-oriented album by Bill. And nice. uh, got some good re reviews, and uh, so, yeah, um, he shot he shot the ballet. They went ahead and did the production. There was production in Milwaukee, and uh, they did a the the notable the most notable song off that is uh, a cover of I believe it's a pulp song, uh, "Common People," that Bill did a great version of on that album. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he had heavyweights on that record too. Henry, so. Henry Rollins is on that. Cheryl uh, yes. Pro. Cheryl Pro, yeah. I know Henry Rollins is unbelievable. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, I didn't think Bill was a uh, bad religion fan, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, where'd you go, um, Glenn? I saw a message from you. Yes, we all see you. You did the Facebook Live thing, right? There you are. We see you. Good work, Glenn. Yes. And uh, Joe, can you tell us about yourself a little bit? Yeah, uh, I'm born and raised in LA. Uh, so yeah, LA native. Uh, I've been uh, editing uh, is my primary been my primary uh, job or, or uh, career for the last uh, <clears throat> thirty years. And um, uh, I met uh, Dave and Kev back in uh, twenty. I guess it would have been 2012, early 2012. Uh, you know, we lost a, we lost a legend yesterday, uh, right. Christopher Plummer. Um, and how I met Kevin and Helene and Dave was um, back in 2012. Uh, I think it was like in March. Actually, it's almost almost nine years ago, uh, like a, a month from now. Uh, I was recommended to. Kevin and Dave by a couple friends of mine that are editors at Paramount Studios. 
mm. for Paramount Pictures. And uh, they needed help with a uh, interview, a three camera shoot that they had done with Christopher Plummer. And so I came in to do ostensibly maybe a three week job uh, cutting together what became now known as uh, the Captain's Close-Up Presents Still Kicking with right. Christopher Plummer and William Shatner. And uh, that was uh, that was my entree into working with 455 Films. And that, that I loved working on that uh, I've lo I've loved all the projects I've been involved with, but uh, that was that was the first one that I did for four five five, or four fifty five, I should say. And uh, I've made that I, mistake too. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but I've been, I've been uh, affiliated with four fifty five right. for a decade now, so uh, it's on me. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, it was an honor to be involved in that project, and I really enjoyed working on that project. I think it's a, a hidden gem that not enough people have gotten a chance to see. Um, but you can now if you uh, uh, contact uh, Shout Factory and pick up the uh, Captain's mm -hmm. Collection. Uh, that is actually on there as a bonus feature, so you can find. Actually, it I think I Captain's have that in my. Disc. You can almost see it. Right up there. Oh, yeah. This, this. Ryan, I would just like to interject my Star Trek biography for fans who may know. Uh, I actually have Star Trek lineage, not only am I a lifelong Trekkie, but my mom's sister, my aunt Sandra Marshak, co-wrote uh, the very first book about the fans called Star Trek Lives. And uh, when we did the love of Spock with Adam, he told us that that was the book that he had on his nightstand for research. No he way. So worked on Bill's uh, first biography. So it was a really great payoff for us years later to start working with William Shatner and to have that connection. And, you know, we lost Richard Arnold this past week and Susan Sack yeah. and both worked with King Ronberry and they both knew my aunt. So it was really great for us when we came on the Paramount lot that people you know, knew where I came from and I had that background and we've, you know, we've been into Trek our whole lives. Wow, that's so cool. I had no idea. She went, uh, into, she actually went into labor on, okay, I'm going to embarrass her now. <laughs> this is in 1993, uh, the golden age of Star Trek when mm -hmm. uh, Voyager and DS9 were both on. Uh, Next the generation, yeah. We were watching Star Trek, yeah. Now also speaking of William Shatner, uh, Jemimus, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, says, Oh, William Shatner Ballet, I'm both horrified and fascinated. Uh, also, somebody anonymous says they love all the docs. And I do want to introduce uh, the sixth member, wait, the fifth member of our panel currently, Lolita. Uh, she had technical difficulties, so she can't join us uh, visually here. Uh, but she is in the comments section, so I don't know if you guys want to tell everybody what Lolita does and who she is. Uh, well, Lolita has a, a long history uh, with Star Trek. She actually uh, worked under Gene Roddenberry uh, when uh, The Next Generation uh, was starting. Uh, she was the, I believe, the script coordinator for uh, all the, the writers. Uh, on Next Generation, and she worked with everyone, and she worked on all the shows up through Voyager. She didn't uh, continue on with Enterprise, but in that time, she also started uh, uh, going to the conventions with uh, Ron Moore and Brandon Braga, uh, and we did a writer's workshop with them, and we go to go all, all over the world, and 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 uh, they would. Ron and uh, Brandon and Lolita would uh, kind of uh, help inform fledgling writers. Uh, and she's also managed a lot of the actors and writers and various people involved with Star Trek as far as their appearances at conventions. So she's she's done so many different things and I'm probably getting some of it wrong. Lolita, <laughs> no, she's all, obviously she's been very instrumental in a lot of these documentaries that we've mm -hmm. done has come to the table and helped us uh, considerably. So uh, Definitely. We, we owe her a, a, a lot of gratitude for the help that she's given us. And, and, you, and you can actually see her in 
chaos in the bridge and uh, in what we left behind. And I'm not sure if she was in, was she was she in Get a Life, Kev? I don't remember. Not sure but, about Get a Life. But she, but she's made she's made a few cameos, and I'm sure we'll see her in uh, in the Voyager doc. Lolita confirms you're doing me well, Joe. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> uh, so that's great. That's uh, awesome. Uh, there are a few other members of the team which everybody will get to know sometime this month. I'm sure we'll be doing a few live videos, uh, as well as one that's very Orville related. We could talk a little bit about that later, but that will be next Saturday at 1:30, I believe. Uh, we will include all that information uh later on so first things first everybody that's watching this at home if you guys have any questions for them uh let us know just ask the questions and we will answer the ones that we can um first of all everybody let us know how much you loved the deep space nine documentary and or the Spock documentary and or the captains or whichever ones you love and uh, have seen. Eve England out in Wales. Thank you for staying up. Definitely. My, my wife is from Wales. Really? So shout out to Wales. Yeah, she's going, she's off to my, uh, my left. You're right, so, my left. <laughs> so was Star Trek Four was about Wales. Wales too, right? I don't want to guess. Uh, who is? Oh, so right. <laughs> I think a symbol craft goes there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Anne Marie's excited for next week's uh, interview with Chase. Um, okay, so let's see what people have to say here. People love Spock, uh, the captains. Eve England loves whales. <laughs> uh, boy, there's a lot. This thing's moving oh, fast. Can you hear my uh, car key? Can't. So, first thing, uh, while they're bringing up their questions, uh, Kevin and Helene, yeah, that's it. since you've been with this since the very beginning, can you tell us a little bit about the genesis of 455 films? Oh, wait a second. Yay, Wales. <laughs> on my, my, my car key. Nice. I think they're... <laughs> I think they're playing the, their rugby game today, right? Are they? Oh, I don't know. Is rugby, rugby on? match? Rugby going? I, Six. I, I can't watch it. So. Yeah, well, Six yeah. Nations. We're having a problem with our uh, our VPN, so we've been unable to watch some things. So, oopsie. So, uh, Kevin and Helene, can you tell us how it all started? Uh, uh, we met David through a mutual production friend of ours. Bill had, had, as we talked of earlier, he had filmed Gonzo Ballet footage and uh, another company in uh, um, Milwaukee had put it together. They'd done about 12 cuts. He wasn't happy. Um, David wow. met Bill at a, at a function. A Hollywood charity horse show. A Hollywood charity horse show. Exactly. And, um, uh, you know, Bill said, to David, do you think you can do anything with this? And David said, well, sure. And so David, uh, we got together with Dave through a mutual friend and we started working on Gonzo. And um, before you knew it, uh, we, the, key to, the key to Gonzo Ballet, which is really, it's, it's pretty interesting, um, the whole idea of ballet and music. But mm -hmm. Ben Folds, like I said before, Ben Folds did a really, really good job with this album um, was critically acclaimed the, the record really. And uh, so we put some cuts together and Bill loved it. And so based on that, he said, you know, well, what else can we do to uh, in discussions with David? And then I, I think David uh, came up with the idea for the captains. And so from there, Bill said, you know, well, let's get that team together again and let's, let's, let's do something. So um, we got together with a Canadian partner and, uh, you know, we started uh, filming the captains and we went, you know, everywhere together. That was a lot of fun. We wound up out in uh, England with with Mr. Sir Patrick Stewart, which was a We've blast. Heard of him. It was a blast. And, you know, on the way there, of course, you know, we had to rent cars and all of a sudden we find ourselves, I find myself with David, we're in a stick shift 
And of course, the, the whole driving thing is on the opposite side from America. So now we're, we're having to find our way to Patrick's house on the wrong side of the road, on the wrong side. <laughs> of the road. And so, but uh, Good times. yeah, it was, it was great. And so, yeah, so that, that was a, a tremendous experience, but um, the captains, it, we, we really, you know, the way, the way the bill works is he loves to explore the human condition and he just sort of charges in things and he wants to find, you know, something that's interesting to him in the process, within the process of doing it. He didn't start off and say, you know, I want to do exactly this and tell people that. So the process was to explore. And so we, when we came back with, with all the footage. Uh, yeah, that's when the fun began. Uh, <laughs> my job is more of a story editor. So when we sat down, we realized that Bill asked everybody the things that he was interested in. So it wasn't so much about what it was like to be a Star Trek captain. It was more like, what was it like coming up in the theater? And what shows did you do in Broadway? And what was your marriage like when you were gone 18 hours a day? And so I think the fans really responded to the captains because it was the questions that we all asked that we wanted to know about them that no one else right. had before. And so with Bill, they really opened up. And I think the epiphany at the end where uh, Patrick and him both talk about being a captain and how they're okay if that's how they're remembered was such a, an authentic moment. And I think that, that, that for us, that was a turning point. He, we made a, uh, we made those magic moments for him. Mm -hmm. uh, now real quick, uh, we've got a bunch of questions, but first we have an answer to our question. Eve England lets us know there's Wales versus Ireland tomorrow. So, so that's out of the way. Uh, here's a good one. Uh, do you anticipate fan involvement opportunities in this documentary as there were for the Deep Space Nine documentary? Now, obviously we know that conventions are the best place to get fan uh, reactions and interaction. And those are largely gone, obviously last year, as well as mostly this year. Um, so that I would guess that that's going to be pretty much up in the air, dependent on. I, I, I can going. tell you, it's a it's a two pronged question. One, that was a device that, as filmmakers, we latched onto with what we left behind, and mm -hmm. we felt it was a great way uh, for fans to contribute to the story. And you know, part of the story about for us of what we left behind, which when we actually did a crowdfunding campaign sort of upended it a little bit was that the per perception from Ira and a lot of the cast and, and, and ourselves as well was that Deep Space Nine was sort of the, the underdog uh, and, and not, uh, didn't get as much respect as the other shows from the, the Ber Berman era and the original series. And we looked for fans that both fans of Star Trek that didn't like DS9 and we look for fans that love DS9 and we wanted to get both those perspectives which we mostly got people just talking about how much they love Deep Space Nine right but we it was very hard to find people that uh would go on camera and, and really bad talk it but that said we we use that as a, a way to help us craft through this uh, the narrative um on the cruise that we went on in last year for the 25th an anniversary of Voyager, uh, we actually did film some some fans, and you know, Helene mm -hmm. uh, coordinated a lot of that. Um, nice. And we were actually able to use one of the great stages on that cruise ship. It was like a Broadway class theater, and we we did get fans talking about their uh, their Voyager loves and experiences. Um, it was, but it was done in a different way than we did it and, and what we left behind. And I'm not saying that we're ruling anything out, but we also don't necessarily want to repeat ourselves as filmmakers in right. the same way and the same plot devices. So if it works for what we're doing, you know, well, Kevin, if you have anything to say about that. Yeah, no, I, I, I would say that the fans are always a part of these docs because mm -hmm. they make it go. Without them, there's nothing. 
and and because of the fan base and the the effect that the the series, the effect that the franchise has had on so many people, the stories continue to be endless. And on as Joe was alluding to, we we have more of those stories um, that are phenomenal um, and that always you know take us take us by surprise. Joe, I'm thinking of the doctor, the 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 gentleman. Oh, uh, yes. Um, with the, with yes, the, I, I'm. Yeah, Francis, Doctor Francis Smith. Yeah, who, was, was he little, was born without without ears, uh, as I believe he has he has uh, implants where he can feel vibrations, and he's he's wow. he he he's a, a very accomplished uh, doctor, and he also is an amazing musician and <laughs> plays piano um he was his, his 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 was a very uplifting story and i hope that there's a place for it in the film but you know at the it's hard to say what the film's going to be until we've actually sat with it and we did we did shoot a fair amount of film my wife likes me to say film she thinks she is a little too <laughs> aggressive and <laughs> negative and in, in digital, in no, digital yeah, cinema yes yes yeah, but um, you know, we 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 hope everything you know we everything that we film we we want to use in some way or another. But at the end of the day, you only have so much time, and and certain things speak to us as filmmakers because when we're when we're we're still in production, and we're not we're not done. Well, we're, we have a lot. we're actually in the early, very very early stage mm -hmm. of production. Yeah. So I uh, to comment about the caliber of the responses from the fan request. We it's actually almost a year ago. It seems like a million years ago. The team went on the Star Trek cruise. And so we put out uh, an ask to the people that were going on the cruise, not just if they wanted to be filmed and if they loved the Voyager series, but why? Who was their favorite right. character? How had the show impacted their lives? And we realize today that we've been doing this for 12 years, listening to fans and their stories about how Star Trek has impacted them and what it means to them. And just, I'm so moved of the caliber of the level of responses, how deep the impact is. And the, the people that came out that day that we were able to film, we have all of them and we have their letters. And so it's really a time capsule because when we got off that cruise, it was a different world. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, literally, Ryan, when we stepped off that cruise, COVID was like we were one of the last cruises to get back in, in port. We um, were right we under were, the we gun. We on, on March 8th uh, of 2020 uh, yeah. is when so we got it is, back. It's the time capsule that we have of those fans that were on that ship, and they did. They came out, and, and it is. It's a passion. If you're, there's no, there's no so-so fans. If you're a Star Trek fan, it's pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, speaking of that, uh, Carly, Carly Shibby in one of the comments asked what your favorite moments or aspects of doing the Deep Space Nine documentary was. Do you guys have anything in particular, like something that surprised you or something that you were really well, happy with? Well, well, Kevin and I were on one of the, were together on filming one of the most incredible days that, you know, we couldn't have foreseen until we got together with uh, Iris Stephen Bear. And that was that writer's room, which yeah. was also filmed in March of uh, 2015. So interesting, March seems to be a productive time for us to, to do uh, some pretty exciting not, stuff. Not, is there anything else going on this March? Uh, I heard rumor that we <laughs> we might be launching a crowdfunding campaign for for this documentary. Oh, what a coincidence! The writers room, the writers room was 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 like you were like like you were nervous because we there was so I mean we were sitting in the room with Icon a writer writers, iconic writers, and, mm -hmm. and I was running the room. And it felt like, you know, we were there, like we were, well, we were there, but it felt like legit, you know, they're breaking a story and we're involved in capturing it. 
So it was very, very, very cool. And then the other one was actually with Deep Space Nine was uh, one of the first things that we did well, the, the cast convention. gathering. What we what we did was we realized that everybody was going to be at the convention, and that some of them hadn't seen each other since they were done taping the show. And so, wow. we, what would be the best way to get them all relaxed and together is we made a party. Actually, we did two nights because there were so many people in the cast. So we got them a big cake, happy anniversary. We got them a little bit of uh, liquor, and we had the most amazing time. Everyone standing in my room showing pictures in their phones to each other was unbelievable. Terry and Nana, Julian are all standing there in front of us, and they're like, look, let me see this, let me see that. There were some revelations, too, with Ira. You know, uh, Joe, you remember, you know, some of that stuff was pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he, uh, I, I believe uh, it was funny, uh, him and uh, Nana, while I was interviewing Nana, you know, he was talking to her about any issues she had. And she, you know, she said sometimes things could be tense with with the, uh, the producers, the execs. And she said, well, and Ira, you were the man. And he, Ira was saying, hey, I, I was the man. Dude. You were a suit. It's a suit, yeah, that's right, a suit, which, uh, you know, was kind of a rev revelation to Ira how he might be perceived. He never, because he doesn't think of himself that way. He thinks of himself as a, as an outsider in a, in a lot of ways. That's his part of his identity. I mean, he loves yeah. and this is music cool. and outside unique This things. is the part what's cool about doing these documentaries, Ryan, is that, you know, Perception changes over your life, right? Over time. What you what you think and your opinions today are not the same five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. So, you know, what's cool about these is all of these people that we've had the pleasure of working with have been, for the most part, removed from that time period for a while. So they have different takes on things, and that's part of what you know we're looking forward to bringing to the fans and and Voyager. Mm -hmm. uh, also, very quickly, um, something that is going on in March, just so that everybody knows, Rico Anderson lets us know that his birthday's in March, so we can all sleep more soundly <laughs> knowing that. Thank you, Rico. Hopefully, it's a successful <laughs> birthday, Rico. <laughs> Uh, sorry, what what do you say, Helene? William Shatner's birthday is in March. Notable. March 22nd, yeah. the same day as, as, as his daughter. Actually. As is uh, Leonard Nimoy's. Hmm. They're, what, three days apart, I believe, wow. him and Bill. Wow. So Shatner, Nimoy, and Rico, now we all know. <laughs> uh, but no, we're also launching uh, the Voyager documentary, Indiegogo on March 1st, so everybody definitely click the link in the description box. Uh, click that link and sign up for the notifications uh, that'll let you know when we're launching or remind you of it. Hang on, let me do something about the sound here. Um, but yeah, as soon as we launch, you'll be notified and you'll be able to be the first to get all the, the, the rewards and the perks that we have. March 1st, it's the biggest day of the year. So be sure to click on that link in the description box below and sign up for that. And sorry, Joe, what were you saying? I saw that some people were asking about the perks and if we had it all figured out yet. And uh, we don't have it all figured out, but we're working on it and we have a lot of great ideas. And, and when we settle on it and it goes public, I can't wait for you all to, to see what we have in store for you. And everybody at home, if you have uh, suggestions, go ahead and put them in the uh, the comments right now because we're putting those perks together pretty much right now. So we're open. Sorry, what were you saying, Kevin? I said they're going to be cool, of course. <laughs> you know, there's some really, you know, there's some, you know, we, we saw something that is in the works. Won't say what it is, but uh, Joe, you showed it to us yesterday. Um, a design of something to be that we all thought was really cool. So I know the fans are going to be happy with that stuff. There's some really cool stuff. I'm actually really excited for them to find out 
what it is because I think all of us are big Star Trek fans that are doing this. So uh, we, when we're making these or when when these these perks are being designed, we're all going like, "Ooh, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty cool. They're gonna love this." <laughs> so uh, Marina Sirtis is also in March. Just to continue the theme of March birthdays. Feel bad for the February birthdays. They're like, "What? We just got skipped." I, I have a, a little bit of trivia about myself. Uh, the last time I got my hair cut was just a few days before we went on the Star Trek cruise on March 1st of last year. So I'm almost a year without a haircut. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so did you used to have short hair? I've only yeah. known you like this. I just thought that was yeah, your, no, I, your I, Portman I, I style. Had, I, I haven't had uh, long hair since uh, the early nineties. So, uh, yeah, I don't There's know. I'm kind of like it. I, I, I'd, I'd like to get somebody to, to make it look a little more, a little better than it is, but I'm, I'm enjoying it for right now. It's been a long time. Now, Katie Carr suggests that we have a coffee brand promote the documentary. The question is which brand. one though. Okay. Don't I don't know of any <laughs> Delta yeah, I mean, quadrant uh, coffee brands out there. Captain Janeway would certainly appreciate that. I guess Starbucks would Okay. <laughs> that's that's okay. more of a that's that's more Battle of a Star. battle star <laughs> kind of uh, coffee. Um <laughs> good thought though. Uh, oh, uh, Lolita had chimed in that uh, Connor Trenier's birthday is in March as well. Really, that's cool. Yeah, more on more on him possibly. We'll see. Uh, hey guys, do you have some uh, love for Enterprise? Everybody in the comments, let us know how much you love Connor Trenier and Enterprise while we continue to talk about Voyager. Really cool guy that we've we've interfaced with over the years at conventions. Uh, really, really nice guy, cool guy. Gave us a, a really good interview for Scott's uh, Scott's half hour. Scott Scott Bakula's half, uh, half hour. Uh, half hour. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of the captains, close yeah, up, yeah. Right? close up. In in which Bill and Scott are singing on the back of a horse. <laughs> and then go to a diner where they discuss life and death. So it's uh, got a little bit of everything in that half hour episode. And, and I remember Anthony Montgomery had a really good interview that we didn't use much of in that mm. that that close up, but it got pretty pretty deep with Bill. Do you remember that, Kev? He, Anthony's uh, and and also found out that Anthony. Uh, uncle is is West Montgomery. Oh, wow. musician, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Major guitar player. Wow. Major yeah. guitar player. Legendary. Legendary. Yeah. Legendary. Innovator. Sure. And speaking of guitar players, it's a good transition. Um, when we were on the cruise, um, I didn't know this. Of course, Lolita and others may have known it, but I'm a lifelong musician. And um, Tim Russ. Summer. Was on, yeah, Tim Russ was uh, on the cruise with his band, and uh, wow, what a what a great great guy and a really really good musician. So I uh, hope to I hope we're able to exploit that more. Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, we have uh, uh, we definitely have some 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 uh, we filmed some of his performance on that cruise and. Uh, there may or may not be some special perks uh, with Tim and his band. We have to talk with them a little bit more about that. But uh, if you're all music lovers and Tim what Russ lovers as well. What a yeah. sweetheart. And, and, you know, when we interviewed Tim for this, we, we only got a few, few interviews because it was literally the initial filming um, for the documentary. Um, so we only got a few in that first jump. But uh, interviewing Tim, he's a musician. I mean, his his vibe, he's a yeah. musician. He happens to right. act as well and be good at it. And obviously, he's done all these things. But in his heart and soul, he's a musician, you know. And uh, he did some great mashups 
you know, Joe, on that cruise. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget what it, it was. Uh, different songs yeah. in completely unique ways that I've never heard before. I was so impressed, so impressed with it. I wanted to play with that band so bad, but uh, the time no, was, that, his, his drummer had a great pocket, too. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, uh, those of you that have had a chance to see Tim's band live, it's amazing. And and yeah, Kevin, you hit the nail on the head. He is a musician that acts is what he is. That's his soul. That's who he is as a person. He's clearly a musician first, right? And you know who? what just reminded me now, speaking about a musician first, is Avery Brooks. Mm -hmm. When we went to his place in Jersey and interviewed him for the captains and he sat down at the piano. I didn't know of his musical background before that day. And when he sat down and started playing, it was like, Oh my, this is a player. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So there's a lot of crossover obviously in the arts with music and, uh, and film and that. And then he would turn right to Kevin in the middle of filming and start talking to him. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? <laughs> Which is very unnerving. And especially when Bill's like, we got to get going. We got to get going. So no, he knew I, he knew I was a player and he was, he was cool. Very, very cool. That was a, uh, that, that was one of the most unique experiences of my, of my filmmaking life was that day. With Avery, and I think he's misunderstood uh, to some extent, you know, um, because he's just one of the most unique individuals ever. Yeah. Um, but wow, what a richness of a person, a richness of talent, his voice, the resonance in his voice. It was a great day. It was a lot of fun. Everyone's been like that. I was thinking back when you asked about DS9, how the actors opened their home to us in one day. We went to Rene uh, Aubergenois's oh, oh, uh, home in the morning and then Armin Shimmerman's home in the afternoon. And just being in Rene's home and seeing all of his artwork and standing there outside and looking at the view. And we had moved to LA from Miami. So we went from sea level to this unbelievable view of the valley. And yeah. he was so gracious. They were both so gracious that day. And we interviewed Jace also at Armin's home. And I just, the cast, all of them were just so gracious and so invested in what we were doing. They've all been that. All of the Star Trek actors from all of the series across the board have opened up to us whenever we've asked. Yeah, that group, that group was uh, extremely humble, super talented, deep, so many quality, quality actors, actresses, individuals. That was a fun ride. I mean, you know, that 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 get together that Helene was alluding to earlier yeah. um, with Ira and the whole cast for the first time when they hadn't seen each other. So much stuff came out of that. So much real, real stuff came out of that. And, you know, Terry, you know, these people all like I said, perspective years later, a, 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 you know, a lot did not know how each other felt at certain times, mm. you know, and if you watch, if you watch that show, you know, watch that doc, you, you see, which many have, I'm sure you see, you know, how Armin felt um, and mm -hmm. how Renee felt in that makeup and how Terry felt and how she left and yeah. the circumstances involved in and around that. But, uh, and Terry and Nana are friends. They're friends from yeah. that from those first interviews. They reconnected. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then Terry and Adam ended up getting married. So right, we're we're a matching service here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys create history though, making all these friendships and and reuniting people and, and all that kind of great stuff. I mean, you really are a part of Star Trek history with what you're doing, it's and it starts. It is. It's perspective too. Like I said before, I just love the perspective because I, I know how I have changed over the years and what I thought was important or wasn't important, you know, 20 years ago. Um, it, it's, it's different. So I love to hear, I'm so into the human condition and um, mm. getting those, getting that perspective from, from so people. much appreciation. I think that's what we really, 
that was the epiphany of what we left behind is that it was the cast and the friendships. That's what they all realized at the end of the film. Ira was looking for what was the reveal. And that was the reveal. It's that them, that unit was what was so special. No doubt. Right. And I'm Joe, you wanted to, you want to say something, but, but yeah, real quick. I, I noticed uh, our good friend, uh, Kieran McGreevy uh, is on this. Uh, he's oh, helped cool. us with a lot of the docs and he works with Lolita. Uh, and he, he's uh, reminding us that uh, Jeffrey Combs also did a Voyager episode. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, just to let you all know, yes, uh, we love Jeff. We worked with him, obviously, on what we left behind. And uh, we uh, definitely are going to interview him. Uh, we meant to do it on the cruise, but he had a crazy schedule. We had a crazy schedule. And he actually lives near, not too far from, from us here in LA. So uh, yeah, we, we, we definitely plan on uh, getting Jeffrey into this uh, Voyager doc. And uh, yeah, Jeffrey is fun. special. He's just so multi-talented and he's such a, again, another humble man with a huge, huge bit of talent and always treated us fantastic. And he's a King Crimson fan, which I love. So what's that? Shout out to King Crimson. They're, they're a great progressive rock band from the seventies and eighties and nineties. And I actually saw them even a couple of years ago. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, we're reaching the tail end of this. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Voyager documentary, the upcoming thing. Um, you do say, you have said, you know, that the documentaries kind of take a, a life of their own. They kind of evolve. And, you know, I, I would only imagine that the most difficult thing, and actually, let me just ask this, is, is it true? Is the most difficult thing of making a documentary cutting out 95% of the stuff you love to fit it all into an hour or two hours, because you're talking about how you could barely use the Anthony Montgomery interview. And it just seems like that would be the hardest thing is there's so much great stuff and you can only use some of it. It is, it is, but you know, um, obviously the most important thing is to find the tone of the film and to, and to find the reoccurring, the re reoccurring messages that are that are flowing through like a, a, a flow through line mm -hmm. um, from everyone. But yeah, I mean, I always talk about these things like a big block of ice. And Joe, of course, knows I, I, as well as anybody I, does. I was going to say it's like a sculpture, Kevin. I was just right there. You know, they, you hear great sculptures say they can see a statue in a block of stone. You know, and and just like any artistic thing, it reveals itself to you, and mm -hmm. you just have to be open to to that. And it's I think tough. that's true. It's tough, to, it's tough because everybody, we all lock into certain things that we fall in love with, just like the writer falls in love with his words, and mm -hmm. it's really really hard to let go. Um, but you fight, you know, you fight for the things that you think are the most important and you fight to the bloody end. <laughs> but but at the end, at the end of the day, it has to fit within the story you're telling. And there's some time. And that's why, thank God for special features, because there's great things that are they're, they're great by themselves. But in the course of making a film, sometimes it just stops the film dead in its tracks to go down something that's disjointed from everything else that came before and is going to come after. So that's why we, and if you've seen what we left behind and if you have the Blu-rays, we have great special features. We have almost oh, yeah. another film, that <laughs> a, a, a film at least feature length uh, of odds and ends that couldn't fit into the film, but we're, we're special. So that's what know, happened I'm, with the Captain's close-ups. Mm-hmm because we could not fit that in that hour plus doc. And so we were, you know, we were lucky enough to be able to kick out five half hour specials with not exactly. a lot of overlay, with not a lot of, you know. There's there's we maybe hard. five minutes per episode of the close-ups that's in the captains out of, wow. so, and there's five, so it's almost two and a half hours. I think it's, it is two and a half hours of the close-ups as opposed to it's, under two hours for the feature. Yeah. 
Do you, uh, do you anticipate a lot of extras in uh, the Void documentary? I mean, I know that it's not all shot, but these things seem to consistently have a lot of extra stuff. Well, the truth is, is that, as you know, Ryan, we're, we're just embarking on right. this. I mean, we, we've got things in the can, but that's, you know, we're, the COVID really hit everyone hard, obviously, and we're all struggling from it and, and trying to come to on the other side, but um, we're moving forward now. So um, there's a lot in front of us that we're looking forward to, including some of those conventions in Germany and- um, And Con, and, yeah. and, 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 and London. Yeah. Well, I just want to share that we do have one piece that I hope will end up as an extra, something very special that happened on the cruise that Kevin has already cut, which was on Ken Mitchell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it fits into the, the bigger picture. As an extra. So yeah. Maybe that yeah. might be something. Yeah. Yeah. We did a, a, a story on one of the Star Trek actors that was on the cruise. So Ken Mitchell's in the Discovery and mm -hmm. uh, he's battling ALS. We had no idea of that when we got on the cruise, uh, which we were there for Voyager, um, but we were all taken with his story and still are. And so uh, we uh, wanted to do a piece on him, so we have. And we'll, we'll see where it ends, we'll see where it lands. And uh, let me just go ahead and show off my nerd cred and say Kenneth Mitchell was also on Lower Decks. So just yeah. everybody at home, don't you don't have to say it. He was also on Lower Decks, and he came back for season three of Discovery, and we all love Ken. He's an amazing guy. I, I wanted to uh, clo close out the thought about the bonus features. And yeah. We don't, obviously, we don't know what we have until we have it, but if history uh, is a guide to the future, I can definitely t tell you that we're going to have some great bonus features. We just don't know what those are yet. <laughs> But if history is any indicator, then yeah, it's going to be. So uh, here's a question um, as we veer fully into the Voyager documentary for the last few minutes here. Um, is there something that, I mean, you know the fans, the Voyager fans, if you don't know this by now, but the Voyager fans might very well be the most rabid of all the fans, of all the fan bases and all of Star Trek and, and beyond. Is there something that you're really hoping to find or convey or discover, or are you just going at this with eyes wide open and just saying, let's just put people together, let's just record people and give them a platform and see what happens? No, I, I think we're, we're, we just wanna dig into some of you know the realities of the time. I mean, the show went through changes. You know, uh, Brannon. Um, we did a nice interview with Brannon, and he came up through the obviously the Star Trek ranks, and um, he became a showrunner, and then he had to bail from it because uh, he got burned out. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's and then you know the network side. There was there was a lot of there's a lot of things there, and uh, we. I, we I, we're, we're, it's, it's, uh, I don't think that we can get into it right now, but we, we have, we, we have plans. We it, have, we have more ideas. More than a shotgun blast. It, uh, <laughs> plans. The, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about making documentaries is it's not a, it's not a script. You know, we have outlines and things that we, we know we want to talk to everybody about, but until they tell us, everybody speaks on a subject. We don't know exactly what we have. And we want any, any, we, we always try and treat everybody equally and with the same respect. So we want to hear everybody's take on something before we, you know, we walk into what that is. That said, we know we want to cover a lot of things with them, but there's, we also want to be open to things that we had no idea about. I mean, some of the, the the, the, there's just so many times that you these you hear happy accidents and and things right. like that. So you want to you you definitely want to go in with a game plan, but you want to be re receptive to the whatever the ether is going to give you, and and be willing to uh, go down some avenues that you never expected in the beginning. That's part of the interview process, you know, Brian. Part of part of you know doing a good job with going down that avenue is is exactly what Joe said, going in with a plan, 
but listening. And then when you hear something that maybe you weren't expecting to be able to go down that avenue and pursue it um, in the best possible way. And, uh, you know, more often than not, you get material that you maybe weren't aware of before. So, and that le that leads to good stuff, good docs. Yeah, uh, I can say for myself, when I first watched The Captains, whenever it was, it was quite a few years back when it first came out, I remember I was like, oh, I'll just put something on real quick just while I'm brushing my teeth or working on something. And I ended up watching the whole thing in one sitting because it was just like, I, I just couldn't turn it off. I couldn't pull away from it. It was fascinating. And the Deep Space Nine documentary, I mean, that's easily one of the best documentaries I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a ton of documentaries. Um, so I guess my question is, how do you guys feel about being the second official Voyager doc? And when I say that, I mean, Robert Picardo was the first. I saw you laugh, but I couldn't hear it. <laughs> right? Do you think anybody's going to say, Voyager doc? I love the Voyager doc. <laughs> What a yeah, that was a setup. That was a setup. Um, a we were on mute. We were on mute. Yeah, yeah it's always do the doc. It's all. It's all about Bob. You know what can you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all about. It's all about Bob. No, no. What a. Uh, well, I mean, actually, Bob, as we all know, that character grew in popularity. Um, he right. he kept growing and growing and growing. You know, they you never know. And the writers talk about this, and I love and I love these stories. Um, you know, they're writing the show, but they're you know they're not you know they're not twelve shows ahead. They're writing a show and they're sitting in dailies, especially with a new cast. And so you sit in dailies and you look at how Nana looked at Renee or Renee looked at I Nana, know. and you go, hmm, it's an odd pair, but there's something happening there. And so now. You know, as a writer now, as they told us, now you start you start going down that road a little bit and writing more and to see how that those things reveal. So another, you know, part of this project is mm -hmm. how these players evolved over time. And, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and definitely, you know, the, the doctor was not envisioned to be when the show was created he was where he ended up was not in their mind that just it revealed itself and and right. to the writers and they kept digging into that and exploring you know you know his his emerging uh consciousness and 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 it, and it went uh, great and you know jennifer lean's character Kess was the one who as at least as a character uh opened that door up and uh once that door opened up they it just kept going and they never looked back see i really thought ryan that when bob sat down at the piano with with uh seven of nine right that that was it <laughs> that he had he had uh he had consummated that relationship, um, but uh, as we know, well, the writers had a different different idea. And, and, and he and was so, a hologram. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she's like, "There's, there's also that." Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, there's you know, mixed mix, mix races to uh, an extreme. That was that was a beautiful episode. My goodness. Uh, now here's a quick question. We just have a couple minutes left. Um, and this is one I don't know if you can answer. Will there be remastered footage like in the Deep Space Nine documentary? I'm thinking the answer is maybe, hopefully, maybe. That 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 is the hope. Um, you know, uh, I think you'll see uh, when we get into our crowdfunding campaign. And if uh, those of you that were involved with the what we left behind. Um, You'll notice that uh, when we just we we always plan to have HD footage in what we left behind. What we didn't plan for was to have almost all of it in HD, and that was something that was a late decision. And actually, that necessitated us going back to the crowdfunding well 
and thank you everyone uh, here and not here that that contributed to that. But really, mm -hmm. the fans made that happen. You know that you know Ira made the right call, even though it was a challenge and it blew our budget that we had at the time. That he said, <laughs> you know what, we have to do all the clips in HD. And I'm glad we did, but it was a lot of work and it was a lot of resources financially and technically, and it was a challenge. So yes, we, I would love to have as much, everything in HD in this film. It really is going to be, I, I, I'm going to have to say it now, it's going to be up to the, the fans that support us to make this film. The fans. I mean, nobody else, nobody else is, are making films like us about Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, and, I, and right. I, just, I want to second that with, with just a comment about, you know, doing these things. You know, the, you know they take so much money, as Ryan, you know, um, but, you know, we put so much of the resources into the films. You know, we spend an, an unbelievable amount of time making these things happen. And, you know, nobody's nobody's making much money in documentaries. So we're not we're not really doing it for the money. I mean, we're, we're doing it for the we, we're doing it for the love of our craft. We make a few bucks. It's great. But the majority of the money we want, we the filmmakers want to see in the piece. We want to see it because at the end of the day, we want to say, we left it all on the field. We left it all on the screen, um, and you know we couldn't have we we can't do we couldn't have done anything more than we did. That's where we want to be. So the it fans shows. know that the funds raised, you know, is plowed into everything that we do. That's uh, really really cool to see, and it, it totally shows in the final product. I, I'm sure that everybody that donated and supported it was proud of the final product. And that's something that is, it's very rare to find where when when they see the final product, everybody was like, wow, I helped make this happen. I'm proud of the, I'm, fi I'm proud of the final product and I'm proud that I helped make it happen. And I do think that Voyager has the show, the seven years of that show, it has its own soul. It has its own story, right? It has its own theme. And I know that the Voyager documentary, just like the previous documentaries you've made, will also have its own soul and its own theme, whatever it may be. And I'm really excited to see how, you know, it it, it comes out, the, the whole process and the finished product. And I think the, the Voyager fans, a couple of them uh, said, yes, we are rabid. A couple were like, what do you mean rabid? But they're kind of rabid. Uh, I think they're going to be very, very happy with how this turns out. I'm really excited about the crowdfunding campaign. The It's going to be you know, pre-sales and perks and all kinds of opportunities. Everybody can jump on once in a lifetime kind of opportunities. And it starts March 1st. So please click on the, the link in the description box below to sign up and be notified about that. Uh, any final words? Anybody? Uh, I, oh, do you want to give a shout out for uh, next week's thing that we're doing? Yeah. Um, so next week it's 1.30. Thank you for reminding me. Let me check and make sure that's the case. Uh, yeah, 1.30. It's with Chase Masterson, also with Lolita, who we just uh, mentioned a few times earlier. We have Brandon Braga and Andre Bormontis. Um, Bormontis. Yeah, Bormontis. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, you'll be able to see that. Uh, we'll be posting that everywhere on social media, exactly where you can find it and, and see it. It'll be the four of them. Um, they'll be talking about Voyager. They probably will talk about Orville because that's extremely relevant right now. So look forward to that. Follow us on social media for all of those posts. That's Voy Documentary, at V-O-Y Documentary. You can also follow 455 Films. That's at 455 Films. Um, you can also just follow Joe. Joe tweets a lot. He's got he's got some good tweets out there. I, I have very few followers. Uh, nobody, uh, <laughs> but I, quality I, tweets. Thank you. <laughs> uh, quality yeah. over quantity. <laughs> uh, Kevin and Helene, any, any last words? Uh, just you know, looking forward to the journey. You know, it's it's always unexpected, and you just kind of dive into the pool. 
and you see what what comes and what happens and we're we're excited for the journey and we know it's going to be a little bit of a different journey just because of the how covid has affected everything but you know we're you know we're looking at down the road a little bit and and I'm hopeful that you know the world will slowly but surely get back to itself and um we'll be able to hit you know some uh some places around the world. Um, for this that, stuff. That, that's, that said, we did do, we have filmed uh, a, a few interviews during the COVID times. So yeah, we got yeah. some stuff in the can. Yes, we did. Uh, uh, not just the cruise, but we did stuff after that. Hey, look, it's a, it's a, it's a film that's fueled by a, uh, a fierce uh, female cast led by a fierce woman in person, in real and in character, Kate Mulgrew, who uh, her captain's close up, you know, that premise was about everyone asking Bill questions too. But Kate was the one that came at him strong <laughs> with that Irish blood of hers. And uh, that's when I really, really kind of fell in love with, with Kate, the person that, uh, intelligence and everything about her. It's true. And I, I would just like to express my appreciation to the fans that are watching and that have supported our work over the years and that all of the actors have always expressed to us that without the fans, none of this would be happening. It's 50, 60 years later from original series. It's crazy mm -hmm. that a franchise has lasted this long and we have fans second and third generation now that are coming with their kids. And so it's been a really great journey for us to be a part of. I can't think of anything else in popular culture like Star Trek. For us, it's just been the greatest. Right. Right. Great. Well, that's about all the time we have today, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have a, a few more of these as uh, time goes on for the rest of this month and possibly during the uh during the month of March, which is birthday month, apparently. And uh, we do want to thank you all. Please be sure that you follow uh, the Voyager documentary on all social media. Anyone you can think of, it's there. Sign up for the uh, Indiegogo notifications. That's in the description box of this video. And uh, everybody be nice to each other. Have fun. Thanks very much, Kevin, Helene, Joe, and Lolita. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>